the Anguttara Nikaya, Book of the Threes, Suttas 111 to 120, Apayika Sutta, the section on the miserable realms. Apayika Sutta. Bhikkhus, without abandoning three things, one will find oneself reborn into the miserable realms, in the hell realms. What are these three? While expected to live a celibate holy life, one engages in sexual acts and lies about it. One slanders someone who is celibate and living the holy life falsely, accusing them of non-celibacy. And the one who upholds the view that there is nothing wrong in sensual pleasures and indulges in them. Bhikkhus, without abandoning these three things, one will find oneself reborn into the miserable hell realms. Dullabha Sutta, Rare Bhikkhus, the arising of three individuals is rare in the world. What three? The arising of the Tathagata, who is an Arahant and perfectly awakened, is rare in the world. A person who teaches the true Dhamma and discipline declared by the Tathagata is rare in the world. A grateful person and who freely expresses one's thankfulness is rare in the world. Bhikkhus, the arising of these three individuals is rare in the world. Appameya, immeasurable. Bhikkhus, there are these three types of persons living in the world. What three? The one easily measured, the one measured with difficulty, and the immeasurable one. And what type of person, Bhikkhus, is the easily measured one? Here, Bhikkhus, a certain person is excitable, muddled in mind, puffed up and vain, is forgetful with loose talk, lacking clear comprehension and who is confused, not aware, with uncontrolled mental faculties. Bhikkhus, such a person is easily measured. And what type of person, Bhikkhus, is measured with difficulty? Here, Bhikkhus, a certain person is not excitable, not muddled in mind, nor puffed up or vain, not forgetful, without loose talk, with mindfulness and clear comprehension established, and who is aware with controlled mental faculties and a mind that is collected. Bhikkhus, such a person is measured with difficulty. And what type of person, Bhikkhus, is immeasurable? Here, Bhikkhus, the Bhikkhu is an Arahant with contaminants fully destroyed. Bhikkhus, such a person is immeasurable. Bhikkhus, these are the three types of persons living in the world. Aninja Sutta, immovable states. Bhikkhus, these three persons are known to exist in the world. What three? Here, Bhikkhus, a certain person, having overcome all perceptions and memories pertaining to matter and going beyond those thoughts and memories that incite anger, not attending to the diversity of memories and mental conjuring, and no longer being instigated through sensory involvement, experiences the boundlessness of space by attaining to that base. He becomes attached to it, craving for it to last, as he strives after it while finding satisfaction in it. Becoming infatuated with it and making much of it, 
without falling away from it after his death, he is reborn in the company of devas within the realm of boundless space. The devas living within the realm of boundless space have a lifespan of 20,000 world cycles or eons. An ordinary person, having lived and completed that lifespan, by using up the merits of his divine birth, goes to hell, or to the animal realm, or be reborn with the afflicted spirits or ghosts. As for the disciples of the Blessed One, once having completed that lifespan in that divine realm, he attains final Nibbana within that same existence. Bhikkhus, this is the difference and the distinction of the future rebirth destination between the instructed noble disciple and that of the ordinary person. Again, Bhikkhus, by fully going beyond the sphere of the boundless space, by knowing that consciousness is infinite and without boundaries, one experiences the boundlessness of consciousness by attaining to that base. He becomes attached to it, craving for it to last, as he strives after it while finding satisfaction in it. Becoming infatuated with it and making much of it, without falling away from it, after his death he is reborn in the company of devas within the realm of boundlessness of consciousness. The devas living within the realm of boundless consciousness have a lifespan of 40,000 world cycles or eons. An ordinary person, having lived and completed that lifespan, by using up the merits of his divine birth, goes to hell, or to the animal realm, or be reborn with the afflicted spirits or ghosts. As for the disciples of the Blessed One, once having completed that lifespan in that divine realm, he attains final Nibbana within that same existence. Bhikkhus, this is the difference and the distinction of the future rebirth destination between the instructed noble disciple and that of the ordinary person. Again, Bhikkhus, by fully going beyond the sphere of boundlessness of consciousness, by knowing that there is nothing, one enters into and dwells in the base of nothingness. He becomes attached to it, craving for it to last, as he strives after it while finding satisfaction in it. Becoming infatuated with it and making much of it, without falling away from it, after his death he is reborn in the company of devas within the realm of nothingness. Now, the devas living within the realm of nothingness have a lifespan of 60,000 world cycles or eons. An ordinary person, having lived and completed that lifespan by using up the merits of his divine birth, goes to hell, or to the animal realm, or be reborn with the afflicted spirits or ghosts. As for the disciples of the Blessed One, once having completed that lifespan in that divine realm, he attains final Nibbana within that same existence. Bhikkhus, this is the difference and the distinction of the future rebirth destination between the instructed noble disciple and that of the ordinary person. Bhikkhus, these are the three persons known to exist in the world. Vipatti Sampada Sutta Moral Failures and Successes Bhikkhus There are these three moral failures. What are the three? These are failure in virtuous behavior, failing to develop the mind, and failure in view. And what, Bhikkhus, is failure in virtuous behavior? Here, Someone destroys living beings, takes what is not freely given, engages in sexual misconduct, tells lies, slanders, 
uses harsh and mean words, and talks frivolously by using idle chatter. This, bhikkhus, is failure in virtuous behavior. And what, bhikkhus, is failing to develop the mind? Here, bhikkhus, someone has a mind that is full of desires along with hatred. This, bhikkhus, is failing to develop the mind. And what, bhikkhus, is failing to rectify the view? Here, bhikkhus, someone holds on to wrong views while functioning with the wrong understanding thus. There is no point in giving, offering, or sacrificing, as there are no benefits or good results for what is generously given, or offerings or sacrifices made. Similarly, there are no results for good and evil actions. There is no this world or other world. There is no mother, no father. There are no spontaneously reborn beings. There are no recluses and Brahmins with upright conduct and character, who, having come to the correct path and method through realizing for themselves this world and the other, confidently and through their own personal experience declare them to others. Bhikkhus this is failing to rectify the view. Bhikkhus, as a result of failure in virtuous behavior after death, sentient beings are reborn into the miserable realms, the lower realms, in the hell realms. Similarly, as a result of failing to develop the mind after death, sentient beings are reborn into the miserable lower realms in hell. So also, as a result of failing to rectify the view after death, sentient beings are reborn into the miserable lower realms, in the hell realms. Bhikkhus, these are the three moral failures. On the other hand, Bhikkhus, these are the three moral accomplishments or successes. What three? These are success in virtuous behavior, success in developing the mind, and success in rectifying the view. And what, bhikkhus, is success in virtuous behavior? Here, bhikkhus, someone does not destroy living beings, does not take what is not freely given, does not engage in sexual misconduct, does not tell lies, does not slander, does not use harsh or mean words, and does not talk frivolously by using idle chatter. This, bhikkhus, is success in virtuous behavior. And what, bhikkhus, is success in developing the mind? Here, bhikkhus, someone has a mind that does not covet and is not obsessed with either desires or hatred. This, bhikkhus, is success in developing the mind. And what, bhikkhus, is success in rectifying the view? Here, bhikkhus, someone holds on to right view, while functioning with the right understanding thus. There is value and benefit in giving, offering and sacrificing, as there are benefits and good results for what is generously given, whether offerings or sacrifices made. Similarly, there are results for good and evil actions. There is this world and the other world. There is mother and father. There are spontaneously reborn beings. There are recluses and Brahmins with upright conduct and character, who having come to the correct path and method through realizing for themselves this world and the other, confidently and through their own personal experience declare them to others. Bhikkhus, this is success in rectifying the view. Bhikkhus, as a result of success in virtuous behavior, 
Sentient beings, after death, are reborn in good destinations, in the higher realms, in the heavenly abodes. Similarly, as a result of success in developing the mind, sentient beings, after death, are reborn in good destinations, in the higher realms, in the heavenly abodes. So also, as a result of success in rectifying the view, sentient beings, after death, are reborn in good destinations, in the higher realms, in a heavenly abode. Bhikkhus, these are the three moral accomplishments or successes. Apanyaka Sutta, with certainty. Bhikkhus, there are these three moral failures. What are the three? These are failure in virtuous behavior, failing to develop the mind, and failure in view. And what bhikkhus is failure in virtuous behavior? Here, someone destroys living beings, takes what is not freely given, engages in sexual misconduct, tells lies, slanders, uses harsh and mean words, and talks frivolously by using idle chatter. This bhikkhus is failure in virtuous behavior. And what bhikkhus is failing to develop the mind? Here bhikkhus, someone has a mind that is full of desires along with hatred. This bhikkhus is failing to develop the mind. And what bhikkhus is failing to rectify the view? Here bhikkhus, someone holds on to wrong views while functioning with the wrong understanding thus. There is no point in giving, offering, or sacrificing, as there are no benefits or good results for what is generously given, or offerings or sacrifices made. Similarly, there are no results for good and evil actions. There is no this world or other world. There is no mother, no father. There are no spontaneously reborn beings. There are no recluses and brahmins with upright conduct and character, who, having come to the correct path and method through realizing for themselves this world and the other, confidently and through their own personal experience declare them to others. Bhikkhus, this is failing to rectify the view. Bhikkhus, as a result of failure in virtuous behavior, after death, sentient beings are reborn into the miserable lower realms, in the hell realms. Similarly, as a result of failing to develop the mind, after death, sentient beings are reborn into the miserable lower realms, in hell. So also, as a result of failing to rectify the view, after death, sentient beings are reborn into the miserable lower realms, in the hell realms. Bhikkhus, much like a dice, when thrown up, wherever it may land, always ends up firmly on its base. So too, as a result of failure in virtuous behavior, after death, Sentient beings are reborn into the miserable lower realms, in the hell realms. Similarly, as a result of failing to develop the mind, after death sentient beings are reborn into the miserable lower realms, in hell. So also, as a result of failing to rectify the view, after death, Sentient beings are reborn into the miserable lower realms, in the hell realms. Bhikkhus, these are the three moral failures. Bhikkhus, there are these three moral accomplishments or successes. What three? These are success in virtuous behavior, success in developing the mind, and success in rectifying the view. 
And what bhikkhus is success in virtuous behavior? Here bhikkhus, someone does not destroy living beings, does not take what is not freely given, does not engage in sexual misconduct, does not tell lies, does not slander, does not use harsh or mean words, and does not talk frivolously by using idle chatter. This, because is success in virtuous behavior. And what, because is success in developing the mind? Here, because someone has a mind that does not covet and is not obsessed with either desires or hatred. This, because is success in developing the mind. And what bhikkhus is success in rectifying the view? Here bhikkhus, someone holds on to right view. While functioning with the right understanding thus, there is value and benefit in giving, offering and sacrificing, as there are benefits and good results for what is generously given whether offerings or sacrifices made. Similarly, there are results for good and evil actions. There is this world and the other world. There is mother and father. There are spontaneously reborn beings. There are recluses and Brahmins with upright conduct and character, who, having come to the correct path and method, through realizing for themselves this world and the other, confidently and through their own personal experience declare them to others. Bhikkhus, this is success in rectifying the view. Bhikkhus, as a result of success in virtuous behavior, sentient beings, after death, are reborn in good destinations in the higher realms, in the heavenly abodes. Similarly, as a result of success in developing the mind, sentient beings, after death, are reborn in good destinations, in the higher realms, in the heavenly abodes. So also, as a result of success in rectifying the view, sentient beings, after death, are reborn in good destinations in the higher realms, in a heavenly abode. Bhikkhus, much like a dice, when thrown up wherever it may land, always ends up firmly on its base. So too, as a result of success in virtuous behavior, sentient beings, after death, are reborn in good destinations, in the higher realms, in the heavenly abodes. Similarly, as a result of success in developing the mind, sentient beings, after death, are reborn in good destinations, in the higher realms, in the heavenly abodes. So also, as a result of success in rectifying the view, sentient beings, after death, are reborn in good destinations, in the higher realms, in a heavenly abode. Bhikkhus these are the three moral accomplishments or successes. Kammanta Sutta Activity Because these are the three moral failures. What three? These are failing in activity, failing in livelihood, and failing to rectify the view. And what bhikkhus is failing in activity? Here, a certain person destroys living beings, takes what is not freely given, engages in sexual misconduct, tells lies, slanders, uses harsh and mean words, and talks frivolously. This bhikkhus is failing in activity. And what bhikkhus is failing in livelihood? Here, because a certain person earns one's living through wrong means of livelihood. This, because is failing in livelihood. 
And what bhikkhus is failing to rectify the view? Here, bhikkhus, someone holds on to wrong views while functioning with the wrong understanding. Thus, there is no point in giving, offering, or sacrificing, as there are no benefits or good results for what is generously given, or offerings or sacrifices made. Similarly, there are no results for good and evil actions. There is no this world or other world. There is no mother, no father. There are no spontaneously reborn beings. There are no recluses and Brahmins with upright conduct and character, who, having come to the correct path and method, through realizing for themselves this world and the other, confidently and through their own personal experience declare them to others. Bhikkhus, this is failing to rectify the view. Bhikkhus, as a result of failure in activity, after death, sentient beings are reborn into the miserable lower realms, in the hell realms. Similarly, as a result of failing to engage in right livelihood, after death, sentient beings are reborn into the miserable lower realms in hell. So also, as a result of failing to rectify the view, after death, sentient beings are reborn into the miserable lower realms, in the hell realms. Because these are the three moral failures. Because there are these three moral accomplishments or successes. What three? These are success in activity, success in a livelihood, and success in rectifying the view. And what, because is success in activity? Here, because someone does not destroy living beings does not take what is not freely given, does not engage in sexual misconduct, does not tell lies, does not slander, does not use harsh or mean words, and does not talk frivolously by using idle chatter. This, because is success in activity. And what, because is success in livelihood? Here, because... Someone does not engage in wrong livelihood. Instead, earns one's living through right means of livelihood. This, because is success in livelihood. And what, because is success in rectifying the view? Here, because someone holds right view, while functioning with the right understanding, thus. There is value and benefit in giving offering and sacrificing, as there are benefits and good results for what is generously given, whether offerings or sacrifices made. Similarly, there are results for good and evil actions. There is this world and the other world. There is mother and father. There are spontaneously reborn beings. There are recluses and Brahmins with upright conduct and character who, having come to the correct path and method through realizing for themselves this world and the other, confidently and through their own personal experience declare them to others. Because this is success in rectifying the view. Because, as a result of success in activity, sentient beings after death are reborn in good destinations, in the higher realms, in the heavenly abodes. Similarly, as a result of success in right livelihood, sentient beings, after death, are reborn in good destinations, in the higher realms, in the heavenly abodes. So also, as a result of success in rectifying the view, sentient beings, after death, are reborn in good destinations in the higher realms, in a heavenly abode. Patthama Sochaya Sutta 
on purity, part one. Bhikkhus, there are these three purities. What three? These are bodily purity, verbal purity, and mental purity. And what, Bhikkhus, is bodily purity? Here, Bhikkhus, a certain person abstains from destroying living beings, taking what is not freely given, and engages in sexual misconduct. This is bodily purity. And what, Bhikkhus, is verbal purity? Here, Bhikkhus, a certain person abstains from telling lies, from slandering, from using harsh or mean words, and from talking frivolously by using idle chatter. Bhikkhus, this is verbal purity. And what, Bhikkhus, is mental purity? Here, Bhikkhus, a certain person does not possess covetousness nor hatred in the mind and lives with right view. Bhikkhus, this is mental purity. These are the three purities. Dutiya Sochaya Sutta On Purity, Part 2 Bhikkhus, these are the three purities. What three? These are bodily purity, verbal purity, and mental purity. Bhikkhus, what is bodily purity? Here, Bhikkhus, a certain person abstains from destroying living beings, taking what is not freely given, or engaging in sexual misconduct. This is bodily purity. And what, Bhikkhus, is verbal purity? Here, Bhikkhus, a certain person abstains from telling lies, from slandering, from using harsh or mean words, and from talking frivolously by using idle chatter. Bhikkhus, this is verbal purity. And what, Bhikkhus, is mental purity? Here, Bhikkhus, when there is the slightest sensual desire, the Bhikkhu knows, there is sensual desire in me. And when there isn't even the slightest sensual desire in him, the bhikkhu knows, there isn't the slightest sensual desire in me. The bhikkhu also knows how the non-arisen sensual desire arises, how arisen sensual desire is relinquished, and how the relinquished sensual desire would not rise again. Similarly, bhikkhus, when there is the slightest anger, the bhikkhu knows there is anger in me. And when there isn't even the slightest anger in him, the bhikkhu knows there isn't the slightest anger in me. The bhikkhu also knows how the non-arisen anger arises, how arisen anger is relinquished, and how the relinquished anger would not rise again. Similarly, bhikkhus, when there are sloth and torpor in him, the bhikkhu knows there are sloth and torpor in me. And when there aren't even the slightest sloth and torpor in him, the bhikkhu knows there aren't the slightest sloth and torpor in me. The bhikkhu also knows how the non-arisen sloth and torpor arise how arisen sloth and torpor are relinquished, and how the relinquished sloth and torpor would not rise again. Similarly, bhikkhus, when there are agitation and worry in him, the bhikkhu knows there are agitation and worry in me, and when there aren't even the slightest agitation and worry in him, the bhikkhu knows there aren't the slightest agitation and worry in me. The bhikkhu also knows how the non-arisen agitation and worry arise, how arisen agitation and worry are relinquished, and how the relinquished agitation and worry would not rise again. Also, bhikkhus, when there is the slightest doubt, the bhikkhu knows there is doubt in me. 
and when there isn't even the slightest doubt in him, the bhikkhu knows, there isn't the slightest doubt in me. The bhikkhu also knows how the non-arisen doubt arises, how arisen doubt is relinquished, and how the relinquished doubt would not rise again. These bhikkhus are the three purities. Living in purity with body, speech, and mind, one stands without any contaminants. Him they call the pure one, accomplished in purity, the one who has washed all evil away. Moneya Sutta Moral Perfection Bhikkhus, these three are moral perfections. What three? These are moral perfection in body, moral perfection in speech, and moral perfection in mind. And what, bhikkhus, is bodily moral perfection? Here, bhikkhus, a certain person abstains from destroying living beings, taking what is not freely given, or engaging in sexual misconduct. This is bodily moral perfection. And what, bhikkhus, is verbal moral perfection? Here, bhikkhus, a certain person abstains from telling lies, from slandering, from using harsh or mean words, and from talking frivolously by using idle chatter. Bhikkhus, this is verbal moral perfection. And what, bhikkhus, is mental moral perfection? Here, bhikkhus, the bhikkhu, through the destruction of the contaminants, and by his own direct knowledge, realizes in this life the taintless liberation of mind, and becomes released through wisdom, by entering into it and abiding in it. This, bhikkhus, is moral perfection of mind. Bhikkhus, these are the three moral perfections. Morally developed in body, speech, and mind, one stands with contaminants destroyed. Him they call the one morally developed, the one who has relinquished all things.